little skeptical at first before going into this movie, thinking that it wasn't going to be as bad as Man of Steel was, because that is one of my most disappointing films of all time. And eh, wrong! This movie is so much worse than Man of Steel. Even some of the diehard DC fans can agree that this is one of the worst films probably of the decade. I mean, who knew that the heads at Warner Brothers were just so beyond desperate to shut out a Justice League movie in order to compete with Marvel? Even having the same team on board, like director Zack Snyder and writer David S. Goyer. Now, I'll give David S. Goyer a little bit of credit back in the past that he was brilliant at doing the Dark Knight trilogy. But when it came to Man of Steel, what was he doing? Now, I don't know if it is true or not, but I heard that he doesn't even give a hoot about the DC fans. And that does not sound good at all for one of the biggest superheroes of all time. However, there is a little bit of credit that I will give this spoopy, and that is Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, and of course Jeremy Irons as everybody's favorite butler, Alfred. Now you at least could see that they were trying to put in a little bit of effort there with each of those characters. Unfortunately for them, it just felt like that they were in the wrong movie, but they were the best parts of it. But the rest of the movie just feels like an incoherent mess, and I hate to say it, but the way this movie plays it out, it just makes everyone stupid. So far, it has garnered $685 million worldwide, but the problem is... It has sold nothing but $685 million worth of stupidity. So where to begin with the story, or lack thereof? Well, of course, we showed the origin story of Bruce Wayne as Batman when he was a child again, attained his parents' funeral, and this is the fifth time that we had to see a Batman origin story in the past 27 years. Come on, guys. I didn't even know it was supposed to be a dream sequence at first, and they showed Bruce being hovered up the well by a bunch of bats. But to me, that wasn't anything amazing. It was just too silly for its own good. Then we cut to present day where Bruce Wayne is running through Metropolis while it is in total chaos while Superman is battling Zod with everything crashing around. And that's actually not a bad motivation to showing Bruce being ticked off at Superman for causing all this destruction and getting all of his workers killed. And I'll just say that Ben Affleck has come a long way ever since his failure back as Daredevil in 2003. I mean, he just nails it as Bruce Wayne, aka the Crepe Crusader. But the one thing that actually baffles me in this film is that when he's taking on his enemies, he actually kills them now. Now that is not the Batman who I remember. I mean, when I was growing up, I was always taught that Batman has a moral code and that he never killed anyone especially his greatest enemy, the Joker. And I know that they tried to explain that he's older and grim now, and he's still bitter and angry over his past. But still, couldn't they have him stick to his morals by honoring his code? Nope, just toss it out the window. It's gone. Despite that, I agree that Ben Affleck is wonderful as Batman, but I don't know if he's the best Batman of all time. To me, that Batman will always go to Michael Keaton from Tim Burton's Batman. Now we come to the Man of Steel himself, Clark Kent, once again played by Henry Cavill. This beloved character has not learned a doggone thing from the last film. Still being bland and having no charisma and not even smiling that much, that is what I love about Christopher Reeves' Superman. He always knew how to be charming while at the same time laying down and kicking some butt. But in this version, Cavill still has nothing to work with. And what truly baffles me is when his Earth mother Martha tells him that he's not a killer and he wouldn't kill anyone. Oh, for the love of God, lady, don't you even recall that he's responsible for all the deaths of those people he caused just to kill Zod and Metropolis? You're just going to play dumb and pretend that never even happened? Okay, here's an idea. Go play in the freeway. As for Lois Lane, I hate to say it, but I'm just going to do it. I'm going to call her the puppet face Amy Adams, is receded to becoming more of a damsel in distress here, and depending on Clark saving her butt every time she is in danger. And another major opportunity which is being wasted here is showing them having a total lack of chemistry since the last film, focusing more on their physical relationship rather than their personal relationship. Now I know that Amy Adams can be a good actress, but here she is not Lois Lane and she never will be. It's great in one of the story arcs that they show that Superman is responsible for the deaths of thousands of people in Metropolis. Having him stand trial before the committee, finally admitting that what he had caused all the chaos and destruction in the city. But... Unfortunately, that is a story arc which doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, a major disaster happens, but what does he do? Nothing. Ugh. 
And then we come to one of the biggest miscasting choices ever in the history of film, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor Jr. Now the very first film I have ever seen Jesse Eisenberg in was last year's movie American Alter, and I admit that he has actually come into his own as a decent actor. But here, he just came across as too obnoxious, his motivations did not make any sense, and why does he want to make the Man of Steel and the Cape Crusader fight each other? For absolutely no reason. Oh, but he's one of the greatest DC comic villains ever and we need to give him something to do in order to make him a bad guy. Uh, give me a break. Even Wonder Woman showing the assembling of the Justice League through the internet did not make much sense either. Using the latest technology that we have to look up Aquaman, Flash, and the Cyborg. The only one who they were missing was Green Lantern, but nobody wants to remember that film. Hint, hint. And seeing the three of them, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, facing off against one of the greatest DC villains of all time, Doomsday, which I felt was way too soon in a movie like this. Anybody even smart enough to notice that that thing looked like the cave troll from Lord of the Rings? It was like throwing too many eggs into one basket. You can build up so much, but unfortunately it becomes so heavy that it breaks and collapses beneath you. Do you think the executives at Warner Brothers have learned that yet? Huh? So at the end of the day, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice was a major letdown. Though I have to admit that Wonder Woman was sexy as hell, and she was kind of decent. After recovering from Man of Steel, I knew exactly what to expect here, so I will give this movie a 3 out of 10. And to David S. Goyer, man, if you don't know how to write a good film anymore, why don't you just quit this job and do something better with your life? Considering the fact on how baffling this movie was, it just makes the trailers to Captain America Civil War and the Suicide Squad look better and better. Thank you all so very much for watching guys. Sorry I haven't been able to keep up to date with any of you because of work and exercise. But let me know what you think about this movie in the comments section below. And as always, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Oh, 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 oh,